Gwen Stacy is one of the most important characters in the history of comic books. Sadly, for the most part she's more famous for dying than for living, although in recent years that has started to change. Still, her death itself is a key point in comic book history, but that, believe it or not, was not the only horrendous thing to have happened to Gwen. If you thought death was bad, that's sadly just the tip of the iceberg for the brilliant but tragically doomed Spider-Woman. With that in mind, I'm Will for What Culture, and here are the nine worst things that ever happened to Gwen Stacy. Nine, being omitted from Fox's Spider-Man cartoon. Fox's Spider-Man, the animated series of the 1990s, is seen as one of the greatest superhero shows of all time, with the series beloved for the sheer number of characters and stories that it pulled directly from the comics. But the one person conspicuous by their absence was Gwen Stacy. For fans of Old Webhead, the five seasons and 65 episodes of Spider-Man were sorely lacking on the Gwen front. It felt, in fact, like a borderline insult to Gwen to have such a detailed, deep Spidey show not include the character in any way, bar a brief appearance from the Earth 31198 version of Gwendolyn Stacy. 8. The Death of Captain Stacy the death of Captain George Stacy is still, to this day, one of the most impactful stories in the Spider-Man mythos, and it is obviously one of the most emotionally troubling things that Gwen has had to deal with. That death came in The Amazing Spider-Man 90, with Captain Stacy finding himself a spectator in a rooftop battle between Spider-Man and Dr. Octavius. As falling rubble threatens the life of a young boy, the captain pushes the child to safety, but in the process, loses his own life. In a touching scene, as Spidey comforts George in his final moments, Captain Stacy reveals that he knew that Spider-Man and Peter Parker were one and the same, and he makes Peter promise to take care of Gwen. Following the sad death of her father, Gwen resented Spider-Man, which in turn saw her butting heads with Peter, who was understandably more supportive of the wall crawler. 7. Gwen's Death when Marvel Comics went with the death of Gwen Stacy arc, that was the first time in comic book history where a major character of such prominence was killed off. It was monumental stuff, and to this day, it remains one of the most memorable stories in Marvel's history. Of course, Gwen's demise came at the hands of Green Goblin after he launched her from the top of the George Washington Bridge. Spider-Man would fire his webbing towards Gwen in order to catch her, yet all Spidey caught was a dead Gwen Stacy. Ultimately, Marvel Comics editor Roy Thomas confirmed in a later issue that it was the whiplash caused by Spider-Man's webbing that was responsible for killing Gwen. 6. Being obsessed over by the Jackal Back before the facepalm-inducing Clone Saga of the 90s, there was the original Clone Saga of 1975. At this point, Gwen had been dead for two years, and so it was a genuine shocker to see her seemingly alive and well. Of course, that was before the revelation that this was merely a clone of Gwen, a clone developed by Miles Warren. Known as the villainous Jackal, this tale revealed how Professor Warren had a creepy infatuation with Gwen Stacy. Having taught Gwen at Empire State University, Warren was so obsessed with Stacy that her death sent him into a spiral of insanity. So crazed was the Jackal, he used his smarts to create a clone of her. To know that a trusted authority figure had spent years stalking Gwen and obsessing over her, well, that's the sort of thing that sends shivers down your spine. Made still worse by Miles Warren getting to ogle a naked doppelganger of Gwen when she emerges for the first time. 5. Feeling Betrayed Another version of Gwen that comes about as a result of uber-creep Miles Warren, in this story we meet not so much a clone of Gwen, but more a resurrected Gwen. Sure, this Gwen Stacy may have ended up turning into a pile of dust by the time all was said and done with the clone conspiracy saga, but in her time back among the living, she got to unload some hard home truths on Peter Parker. She revealed that in her dying moments, as in thrown off the bridge by Green Goblin, she felt betrayed. That was because Gwen's last breaths were spent feeling heartbroken at the realization that Peter was Spider-Man and that he had chosen against trusting her with his deepest secret. 4. The Real Reasoning for Gwen's Death According to the legendary John Romita Sr., he and writer Jerry Conway were originally told that Aunt May would be killed off back in 1973. Both of them thought this was a bad idea, and so it was decided that Gwen might be a better fit to be axed. In a narrative sense, it was decided that Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy were too perfect for one another. 
Even though they'd had their falling out following the death of Captain Stacy, Marvel felt that Peter and Gwen were so great together that it was inevitable that they'd marry, and the powers that be didn't want Spider-Man to be tied down by a marriage or to reveal his secret identity to Stacy. Skip ahead a few decades and you can start to understand why Peter and Mary Jane's wedding was erased from history in the god-awful One More Day arc. 3. The Death of Peter Parker while so often the name of Gwen Stacy conjures up the emotional impact that her death had on Spider-Man, the alt-world of Earth-65 saw that particular situation flipped on its head. In this reality, Gwen Stacy is the one who ends up bitten by a radioactive spider, in turn becoming the heroine Spider-Woman. This world's Peter is a classmate of Gwen's and one of her best pals, but he's also a figure who is constantly picked on by bullies. Reaching his breaking point, Parker ends up becoming a version of the Lizard in order to seek revenge on those who made his life a misery. Unfortunately, Peter's attempts to become the Lizard ultimately backfire, with the chemicals used in this experiment leading to Parker dying in Gwen's arms. Using this as her Uncle Ben moment, the emotional impact of Peter Parker's death saw Gwen refocus her life to make sure that she was utilizing her powers and abilities to do all that she could to make the world a better place. 2. Being overlooked by the masses while, or perhaps because, the death of Gwen Stacy is viewed by even the most casual of comic book fans as being one of the most iconic and shocking moments in the history of comics, a lot of people tend to overlook Gwen as an actual character. Oftentimes, Gwen is left being a mere footnote in Spidey's history. In a sense, she was the first ever woman in comics to be stuck in the fridge, just used as another vehicle to progress our hero's story. Luckily though, recent years have seen Gwen become much more than Peter's dead girlfriend. With the Spider-Gwen series and of course the glorious Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, Gwen's days of being a footnote may be at last over. 1. Her Affair with Norman Osborn Okay, so it's near impossible on a list like this not to shine a spotlight on the 2004 revelation that Gwen Stacy actually had an affair with Norman Osborn. And not just an affair, but this relationship led to Gwen secretly giving birth to twins shortly before her death. As the story goes, Gwen had given birth to twins, Gabrielle and Sarah, in France, with the Osborne goblin blood in them causing the siblings to grow at an unnatural rate. After Gwen promises to keep the kids away from Norman and raise them with Peter, that turns out to be the final straw for Osborne, and it's explained how this played a part in the Green Goblin throwing Gwen off the George Washington Bridge soon after. Sins Past, All Things Considered, is a story that few look back on fondly, and it's a tale that further shows not only the horrors that Gwen Stacy went through before her death, but also felt a little like a WTF moment when it comes to the fundamental characteristics of Gwen. And there you have it folks, the 9 worst things that ever happened to Gwen Stacy. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at YouSlyDogU. I'm Will for What Culture. thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.